Então, o compêndio da Lexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração. Você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é a Lexio Divina? A Lexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita, no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hi everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth, I'm Seas of the World Community, and I would like to welcome all of you there joining us this Wednesday, November 24th. On this day, the church celebrates St. Andrew Dunglac and Companions. In the 16th century, Christian missionaries went to live among the people of Vietnam. From the 17th to the 17th to the 19th century, some 130,000 Christians were martyred. Andrew Dunglac, born in 1785, and Peter Thai, Vietnamese priests, were beheaded on December 21, 1839. A letter written in 1843 by Paul Lee Bao Tim Tin, an unimprisoned martyr, Describe his faith in God's love and mercy. I, Paul, in chains for the name of Christ, wish to relate to you the trials besieging me daily, in order that you may be inflamed with love for God and join with me daily in his praises, for his mercy is forever. The prison here is a true image of everlasting hell, to cruel tortures and of every kind. Shackles, iron chains, manacles, are added hatred, vengeance, calumnies, obscene speech, quarrels, evil acts, swearing, curses, curses, and all anguish and grief. But the God who once freed the three children from the furious furnace is with me always. In June 1988, Pope John Paul II declared 117 Vietnamese martyrs saints of the church. On this day we celebrate martyrs, martyrs that gave their lives for the faith of Christ and especially for the Vietnamese people, for the Vietnamese Christians on that land. So let's ask their intercession upon us today and let us pray for all persecuted christians all places on earth that cannot live their faith that cannot profess their faith in christ openly as we can do here for the reading of the liturgy we continue the reading of the prophet daniel today will be chapter 5 and different verses again so chapter 5 verses 1 to 6 then we go to verses 13 to 14 verses 16 to 17 and verses 23 to 28. The canticle is Daniel 3 and the gospel is from St. Luke chapter 21 verses 12 to 19.
we can start the reading of the Word of God. King Belshazzar made a great festival for a thousand of his lords, and he was drinking wine in the presence of the thousand. Under the influence of the wine, Belshazzar commanded that they bring in the vessels of gold and silver that his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, so that the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the vessels of gold and silver that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank the wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and began, began writing on the on the plaster of the wall of the royal palace next to the lampstand. The king was watching the hand as it wrote. Then the king's face turned pale and his thoughts terrified him. His limbs gave away and his knees knocked together. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king said to Daniel, So you are Daniel, one of the exiles of Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you that a spirit of the gods is in you, and that enlightenment, understanding, and excellent wisdom are found in you. But I have heard that you can give interpretations and solve problems. Now, if you are able to read the, read the writing and tell me its interpretation, you shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around your neck, and rank third in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered in the presence of the king, let your, gifts, let your gifts be for yourself, or give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writings to the king and let him know the interpretation. You have exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven. The vessels of his temple have been brought in before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have been drinking wine from them. You have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know. But the God in whose power is your very breath, and to whom belong all your ways, you have not honored. So from his presence, the hand, the hand was sent, and he, this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mene, mene, tekel, and parshin. There is interpretation of the matter. Mene, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Ketel. You have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Charis, your kingdom is divided and given to the Meds and Persians. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Daniel was made uh, a servant of the king of Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar died and his son... Belshazzar assumed the kingdom, became the new king. He was worse than his father. One day, he just decided to drink wine in the vessels of the temple of God. It was just if we took the chalice that we celebrate for Mass to use for drinks, to drink whatever we want. That's the same profanation that, that this king did, Belshazzar. So he heard about Daniel. The fame of Daniel was known to everyone in the kingdom. So he called Daniel to, imper to interpret to him what was going on. He didn't know if he was just drunk and seeing this handwriting stuff or wh what was that? And he called Daniel. And first, interesting, he offers Daniel a lot of gifts if Daniel would interpret to him. But Daniel, remaining faithful to the Lord, said, 
Keep your gift to yourself or give it to someone else. But I will give you the interpretation to show you who is God. And Daniel said, you honored so many gods that cannot hear and know and understand, but you have never honored the God who gives you breath to whom belong your ways. So strong. This king honors so many things on earth, but he did not honor the one who gives him the very breath of life and the one who knows his ways. This is what we are called to do. When we honor God, we honor the one who gives us the breath of life. We honor the one who knows all our ways. And Daniel gives the interpretation. And here we see this kingdom that Nebuchadnezzar are built, this strong kingdom, this golden kingdom. It starts to become fragile with his son. It becomes silver. And then it will go on until this kingdom will be defeated. And God will reestablish, reestablish his kingdom on earth. The responsorial psalm, a canticle from Daniel 3 says, Bless the Lord, all you powers of the Lord. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, stars of heaven. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all rain and dew. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you winds. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, fire and heat. Sing praise to him and highly exalt him forever. And the gospel of today, Luke chapter 21 verses 12 to 19 says, Jesus spoke to his disciples about the end which is to come. He said, Before all the tribulations occur, the authorities will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand and contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, by brothers and sisters, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. What is Jesus asking of you and of me today? Endurance. Endurance. To be able to endure whatever we might be put through. Again, the gospel is talking about the end of times, the end of times. And Jesus is saying, yes, you will be persecuted, be persecuted. But why? It will, it will be an opportunity to you to testify, to testify to the name of God. Everything that we go through in our lives has a meaning, has a purpose. And what is the meaning? What is the purpose? To glorify God's name. And here, we see clear in this gospel. Everyone will betray you. They will hate you. They will do all sorts of things against you. Yes, they will. But be happy. Be happy because I'm telling you this. It won't be a surprise when it comes to you. And this very, very important verse. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. We all want to go to heaven. We all want to be with Christ and his eternal kingdom. That is not, not this kingdom here on earth. 
how we will get there through endurance by endurance by your endurance you gain your souls we need to gain our souls for ourselves saying this world does not matter to us what matters is eternal life so we do everything that is needed to attain eternal life to to get eternal life because god gave us the grace jesus gave us salvation gave us the opportunity but now we need to work on our endurance to be able to gain our souls and to go to heaven and be with Him. May this end of the liturgical year gives us this understanding that the end of time is coming. It's not, not, it's not right here, right now, but it is coming. And how will we uh, live through it? By endurance. So by endurance, we will gain our souls. Amen. <music>